welcome to the Fearless Future podcast. We're your host, Glenn Schwarm. And Amber Schwarm. And today we're going to talk about Airbnb and the boom is over and what we're doing differently in 2024. So I find it interesting that Airbnb's profit is up, but there's a lot of hosts whose profit is down. Yeah, I'd rather get announce our numbers here coming in February and overall their revenue is up and yet... <laughs> They're doing well, but as hosts, we did not do well this past year at all, right? right? So we've converted what? We had 13. 14 with the one in Florida. 14, yeah. We had 14. We got rid of the one in Florida um, for other reasons, but so we had 13 units, and now we're converting all but two to long-term rentals. Right. And, and it's for that reason. It's for that reason because our profits are down. You know, what was, what was interesting is we did really, really well during COVID, which was really scary at first because yeah. we only had a couple at the time yeah. and then COVID hit and all of our bookings just like canceled overnight. Now, wait a minute. That's not true though. Cause I think that our, our first Airbnb we ever, we ever opened was during COVID. Am I right? How many did we have? It was when right COVID... before. It was right before COVID hit. That's when we opened the first one. Yes. Yes. Because we were booked and then we had how many, how many at that point? Two or three. And those are the ones that were booked out for many months. Well, well, after COVID hit. So we, we had bookings on right. them and then COVID hit and the world shut down and yeah. everybody canceled. Remember we had the guy across the street from us that, that stayed there in the house. He wanted, oh, yeah. to, he wanted to come out of New York City because yes. of the pandemic. And he would not, I even said hi to him and he would not come off the porch. He just said, right. nope, stay away. I'm like, okay. But, that, but, but they that's rented what for happened. six months. That's what happened is all of a sudden after everybody canceled, then everybody rebooked for long-term states because they didn't want to be in the city or whatever. Right. So we had, right. we killed it during COVID. Yeah. And then... Once the world started opening back up, yeah. that next year we did really, really well. So, what, so, so why do you think that is, though? Why well, do you, I mean, you're the one that ran that business. So why do you think that it is? So, so the numbers that we're talking about are Airbnb's 2022 numbers. Their 2023 numbers are about to come out in right. February. But their revenue's been high, so you have to assume their profit's going to be as high as well. I, I'm, I'm interested to see. I, I wonder. I wonder because it does feel like travel has slowed down. Like even, even after COVID was over and the world started opening back yeah. up, we did really well through those months. Like people were just chomping at the bit to travel and to yeah. get out of the house and to go places. We still did really, really well there, especially in the summer in upstate New York because yeah, that's right. where, where ours were. Um, but this last year in 2023, we've seen a really, really steep decline in the well, yeah. number of stays and how much we can get per night. So we started out this thing. We had big plans of making 2000 bucks per, per unit, per unit, per month, per month. Profit. Right. And we thought for sure. So if we had 13 units. We're thinking to ourselves, there's 26 grand a month. Right. Has a quarter mil, maybe three hundred thousand dollars in net profit. Right, it didn't happen. Right, and so it started to decline dramatically, and so we started to figure out what in the world are we doing, and now we're getting rid of all of them but two. Right, right? and one of the things you kept saying, you kept driving home and saying, "I think we have too many," and I kept saying, "No, no, no, no." no. You said, "No, I think we have too many." And of well, course, we had me, too many in the same town. Yeah, of not necessarily too many because I don't think you can have too many if they're if they're spread apart and in the right locations. Yeah, we had too many in a concentrated. Well, you area. kept saying that. You know me. I kept pushing, going, no, yeah. no, no. We can we can have more. Let's just do it. Let's dominate. No, but we, we dominated. We were our own comp. We were our own competition. We were our own worst enemy. <laughs> yeah. So I think that drove the price. So now we're trying to get rid of those. Just keep two, which is our old house and the one across the street. Yeah. Little compound we have for ourselves there for when we go back to New York. Right. But now we're going to see if that works, right? Because if yeah. we get rid of the other ones, will that make will that make those two much more in demand. Well, yeah, it's a supply and demand situation, yeah. right? If there's not as many to pick from, hopefully the ones we do have will stay booked more often. So we create our own problem, but I think that's happened all over the country too. Now we're in a weird market and they're in upstate New York that there's not a lot of, or are there, are there a lot of Airbnbs there? I mean, there's, there's a chunk, you know, there's, we're not the only ones up there, but I think that what's happened is, you know, not only like in our situation being that there's not a lot up there, we were our own competition. Whereas in a lot of the other parts of the country, there's just so many people that jumped on the bandwagon of, of making this their real estate investment. We, well, we know people that built communities out of them. Right. 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 But but because of that, there's a lot of competition even amongst other hosts, yeah. not just amongst themselves. So because of that, Airbnb might be doing really well as a company right. because they're getting a lot more bookings. But because there's more hosts, there's less per host to make money. Plus right now... Doesn't Airbnb want us to drive to lower to lower prices? Yeah, lower prices to yep. attract more people. Right. So they're saying, hey, just lower 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 prices, get more bookings. That means that the host makes less money. Right. We, so our expenses are pretty standard. I mean, we have yeah. mortgages and we have taxes and we have utilities and we have to pay for internet and we have to pay for all that stuff. Yeah. But that that's a constant with that expense. So if you lower your rate, you're just you're cutting into your profit directly. 
although Airbnb doesn't cut into profit directly because they get a small percentage, plus they upcharge on the booking fee anyway. But you have to wonder, are they, and you, you got to think a big company like that has to have the foresight to know that they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot with that though, because if they're, if they're, if the hosts aren't making any money, then more and more hosts are going to do what we're doing and, yeah. and get out of the game. Yeah. So then that's going to be less revenue to them. So are they thinking big picture? I don't know. I know that we are, by, by cutting those back, we think that, you know, we are renting these now fully furnished houses because yep. people, people forget that when you set up an Airbnb. It's 10, 15 grand. Yeah. A four bedroom house. A three, three or four bedroom house. Yeah. Yeah. It's how much would we pay for those? Twelve to $15,000 to furnish them. To furnish them. Yeah. Because you have to buy all that silverware and kitchen stuff, bedding. Yeah. Yeah. All the goods. Plus people steal stuff and oh, yeah. all that, all that goes on. Break so, yeah. stuff, steal stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So when when was the best time to be in short term rentals? I wonder. Do, is it coming? For us, it was COVID. <laughs> yeah, for, for that area at least. For that area. Yeah. yeah. And I wonder if people are in vacation destinations. Now we live where we live in Florida. There's a town down the road, you know, Indian Rocks. Right. They they are trying to fight like crazy to ban Airbnb. And now because I think, they're in residential areas. I believe in Denver there are no short term rentals allowed anymore, and there are other cities popping up around the country that are banning them. They tried to yeah. ban us. Yeah, but we fought the government. Yep, and we we won. We fought. We fought the man, and we won. And we had the we had the city backing us, which is an interesting story. That's yeah. a, that's for a different day. I think in Denver you can only do it if it's if you live there too. So if you're like renting out a room, but that's not good for an investor. An investment property, right? Yeah, that's not good for an investor. Right. So that's so that's gone. So you know, there's a lot of people that are that are, and and I think the one of the reasons we wanted to get rid of so many because I didn't, we don't want to be stuck. You know what's that saying with our tit in the ringer? It's a lovely, it's a lovely saying, right? <laughs> it's lovely. But we don't, we don't want, we don't want to be stuck there with that. So we were, you know, all of a sudden we were holding uh, thirteen short-term rentals that now we couldn't use because they in different counties they were trying to ban us. They are, and there's more to that story too. So it's not just the fact that our revenue was decreasing because we're not getting as many bookings, yeah. um, which I think is also a sign of the economy. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But it was also the headache factor because- They have been a pain in the ass. They have been, they have been a lot of work. And, and, I've, and I've been watching you manage it. Yeah. And so even for me on the outside, but yeah, it's, they've and, been a pain. And even I'm removed, but I still hear about it because I yeah. wasn't the ones dealing with the customer service aspect of it because you're not just in the real estate investment space. You're in the hospitality industry. Yeah, right. And people's expectations of the, the Airbnbs and just short-term rentals as a whole, their expectations started to increase because no longer was it just, hey, some room that somebody right. has in a house. They want like hotel amenities and right. hotel customer service. Right. And, and if you, you don't know, have it, you're getting a bad review. Bad review. And then the neighbors get all pissed off because the trash cans are overflowing and they didn't yeah. take them out in time. And somebody was playing music too loud yeah. and out in the, it, it just, it was, it became a headache. I think that what we've learned is that, you know, there's passive income when you have long-term rentals, multi-unit rentals, any kind of other rental, that's a passive income if you have a property manager handling it. Right. So for the most part, they're almost fully passive, except right. for big decisions here and there. With those short-term rentals, it was a constant grind. So it was like having a job. It is. Because, and, and also it's very difficult to make money if you're not the one doing it, right? Would you say right. that? Because when we first got started, you managed the first one, I think, didn't you or no? Uh, we had Dakota doing our son, the management of it. Yeah. yeah. So, but like, like the customer service aspect, making sure the bookings got approved and yeah. check ins and all we that did stuff. really well at one or two or three. When right. we started getting up to four, five, 10, 12, 13, 14, it started to get a lot more complex because all of a sudden we had to hire somebody to go around and fix stuff because guests don't treat your house well at all. No, they break stuff. They, they're flushing washcloths and stuffed animals on the toilet. Yeah. What the heck is wrong with people? Just you know, and they clog it up, and then they leave, and you couldn't prove you couldn't prove who flushed on the toilet, right? Because it was it could we have had a basement over our house. Our the basement, yes. the basement flooded because people were flushing feminine products, and and you can't prove who that and was. And washcloths, yeah, and towels yeah. down the toilet. So yeah. morons, right? Yeah. And so I don't, yeah, that that got to be really a, a pain right in the butt. So it, it got. I think that what I learned is that if you want to own some short term rentals and you manage them yourself, just remember it's not going to be passive income. It's good. It could be good income if you're not subbing that out, but it's a job. Yeah. You will be doing the work yourself, but you can make money. We didn't make a lot of money. We didn't make money at all last year on these short-term rentals. So we had to, we hired so many people to do those things for right. us. That that ate up the profit. Yeah. We needed to have probably 20 more units to try to offset the cost of having those full-time people on staff. And it just wasn't a good, it wasn't a good move. And another kind of unforeseen cost that we weren't really, didn't really think through 
was just the financial side of it and and having the accounting team you know yes. track all of that stuff and yeah and yeah. people's yeah. whether it whether it yeah. was our maintenance guy's time whether it was the the maintenance that was actually being done whether it was just lane, all the, the cleaning, cleaning crews, people, yeah, cleaning the, people. The, the transactions for the stuff that had to be yeah. bought the transactions for it just it yes. the, the accounting the accounting was very expensive. Yeah, when to you're keep track yeah when you're running a bigger company and you have to main you have to maintain all those little tiny transactions. It's it's not like they just enter one no. lump sum. Like when you have long term rental, somebody pays you two thousand bucks for the month. Right, that's what comes in and that's your expense. Right. However, when you when you have multiple little tiny income streams, including cleaning fees and then extra. You know, when we had to charge them extra if they'd ruined something right. or whatever, or they stole something. Or, or they checked out later, they smoked in the house. or Right. And those are extra fees that had to be added on with accounting. Plus, right. these are multiple little charges. So all of a sudden- they And all the different states. Yes. You know, you, you could have yes. two or three people that come into one house in, in, a week. in a week. Yeah. So all of a sudden, it got very- And our, our accounting team, I'm like, what is all this bill for? It's like, well, we're trying to maintain all your books here straight. Right. And so it got very complicated. Yeah. So yeah, I think, I think it's- to scale those is a whole different animal than it is to do a few. So I wouldn't discourage people from doing, would you? Would you say don't do one? I, I would not say don't do one. I think if you, if it's in the right area. And so here, here's the other thing I think about that is it seems like this happens with different industries that, you know, everybody jumps on the bandwagon. They're all excited. They yeah, get in right, and then it's yeah. a lot harder than they think or they don't like it for one reason or another. And then they they get out. So I, I think there's that, that um time period where things are really exciting about it and then everybody jumps in but there's also that time period where um you know for lack of a better term it's like it separates the men from the boys like yeah like maybe maybe this is a time period where there's going to be that cleansing and a lot of people yeah. are going to get out of it and so it will be a good time again and that may even be area dependent yeah you know our, most of ours are not in a travel destination and maybe ones that are in a travel de destination are different yeah but what i was going to say earlier that I said I would jump back on is like we live in Florida yep. and this is snowbird season. And this year has not been nearly as crowded. And when we're doing our, our walks I on the beach, I noticed you, see, that. you see the condos with the, the storm shutters. Yeah, they're not the here. Hurricane shut, they're not here. Well, it's so, freezing here right now. So well, it's <laughs> that, been freezing for two months. Too, but, <clears throat> but not like the rest of the country. Correct. So those people would still, if they were doing the snowbird thing, they would still be down here. So I think just the economy as a whole, I think that speaks to that. Yeah. Like, you know, last year we could hardly even get restaurant reservations down yes. here. This year it's not a problem. Traffic's yeah. not as bad. So I don't think people are traveling as much. I think that's a sign of the economy and what's going on. So hmm. even in travel destinations, I think that that's going to yeah. be an issue. I think we should talk about, you know, we've had some doozies uh, when it comes to problems. Oh, gosh. Because the problems you have with a short-term rental, we've had some doozies. We should, uh, we should share the one horror story that we've had. That's really bad. That we, was a bad. We don't have to spend hours on it, but I think we should talk about that because I think people need to be aware that stuff can happen. Yeah. Um, in a short-term rental, and you just need to be aware of it. So yeah, you want to talk about it? So before we jump into that one, though, I think we should talk about the one that happened across the street. So we never which, let which one? We've had a lot of them. So so oh the party? Yes. The oh. party. So this was during COVID. <laughs> <laughs> this was during COVID. Um, we do not let people know that we own the Airbnb. Like they didn't know we were the owners. Yeah. So so all of a sudden we're at our house and we we hear noises across the street. We're looking across the street. We see a lot of people going in and out. There's these two guys standing on the front porch. And I'm like, something's going on there. What's going on there? So they see us looking out the window. And one of the guys. This the is young, like 1030 at night. This is like, yeah, it's yeah. late. Um, and this is right in the heart of COVID. So you're yes. not supposed to be having big gatherings, whatever. So the guy comes over and he he's very respectful and he, he comes over. He's like, I let, let me let me take the story from here because you don't, you won't do it justice. So they <laughs> they come across they come across the street and I am standing there in my underwear, no shirt on. That's a pretty picture. And I'm standing there in the door. And we have a screen like on that door in New York. And he walks up the door and I said, "How you doing, boys?" And he said, "Oh, good." He thinks we're just a neighbor right. at this point. And he a nosy says, neighbor. Hey, I just want to let you know we're just going to have a few friends over. And uh, they're going to be gone by, by 11, 11 o'clock. I said, 11 o'clock, that's in 30 minutes. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had told you before, let's not let anybody know we're the owner. And of course, you marched up behind me and said, I own that house. And I told you not to have a party there. And I'm like, oh, great. Because well, that was part of our rules. Like they have to, people yeah, have I to know, abide by the rules. You didn't have they... to bark about that when you walked up like Miss Tough <laughs> they Guy. They pissed me off. I know. Because now, well, now I'm standing there in my underwear going, oh, great. Now I got to fight these guys. But, but, then, but then he's offering to like cut it. Basically, yes. they were taking a cover charge. So he, Correct. And then he offered to split split the thing with us. You got to admire their, their entrepreneurism because they were going to take a $10 a head cut or something from these kids. So- 
Right. So for our listeners, what had happened is they posted on social media that yeah. there was a party at this Airbnb. People were like Ubering in from an hour away. An hour away. And it was and, and they knew enough to tell everybody to park. Yes. Because it's a cul-de-sac. It's a it's a private cul-de-sac. Yep. And we're on the very end of the cul-de-sac. And they knew to tell people to park in other streets and walk in. Which we impressed me. Their their thought process impressed me, I yeah. gotta say. So anyway, so then I then I, then I get a I I, I I go in and put my clothes on because I looked over in the garage and I saw all kinds of people dancing. I'm like, oh no. And so I, this is getting to be close to 11 o'clock. I'm like, this is not going to be good. Put my clothes on. I, I go, I open the door and there's three officers right there in front of my door. I said, good evening officers. They said, we understand that you might be the owner of this. I said, follow me. <laughs> That's all I said to him. I said, follow me. We walked over. I opened the door and said, get out. Get out. I said, this is no they party. they scattered. They scattered. Everybody <laughs> like <cockroaches>. ran. <laughs> Opened the one door and a bunch of guys sitting there smoking weed. I'm like, get out of the house. And the cops, the cops stayed very cool. They did. They were And they, cool. they got them out. A lot of young kids there, mm -hmm. like 16, 17, older. One car was left in the driveway and the, the guy was too drunk to drive. So somebody, the cops waited until somebody came and got him. But what a situation. Yeah. They didn't do a big, didn't do a lot of damage to the house, but it was the next day, all I could hear from my neighbors was, what the hell happened in your name? <laughs> what was going on here last night? I'm like, oh, nothing. We took care of it. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, this is terrible. So that was that was yeah. a very challenging thing. Now, we made it through that without any financial damage. Right. Right. We, we had to clean up it the yard. It was a lesson learned, though. It was a lesson learned. So yeah. we you figured out how we can, we have different trains on how to that we filter talk about. Out the parties. Filter out parties. But we figured it out from that. That was a big one. Yep. But let's talk about the one that's that's down the road from yeah. us because we had everybody all around our our house. This is one that I think we, I just want to block this one. So out let's start memory. by saying this on this on this Airbnb screw up. We lost well over sixty thousand dollars. Oh, Ma probably maybe, probably north of seventy five. Thanks for making me feel better. So okay, yeah. so north of seventy five thousand dollars we lost on this management screw up on our part so yeah. how do we succinct this story without you getting overly angry oh, just... <laughs> um, go ahead <laughs> yeah so this was this was somebody that um kind of from the get-go should have been a red flag she was yeah. she was local uh she had multiple children six or seven kids i forget how many um and and it was it was a debacle from the get-go so she made the reservation she wanted to stay there long term she claimed she had very sick kids, kids with right. cancer, breathing problems. Right. And she had to have a new house, blah, blah, blah. And it was brand new. We really just finished the right. house. Brand Beautiful. Four bedroom. Beautiful. Two and a half bath. Beautiful. Go Everything ahead. all new. So um, from the get-go, something happened and she claimed that Airbnb double charged her. So Airbnb refunded her and then Airbnb sent us a message saying, just have her pay you direct. So we did. Which was a huge screw Which up. was a huge screw up. Now, looking back, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Looking back, she probably had done this scam before and figured oh, out yeah. how to do it. Yeah, she was, she was not new to this game. So she ended up, let, let's make a really long story short. So she ended up staying there, I think it was like um, nine months. and uh, Well, we, about six months before we found out she wasn't paying. Right. So again, our accounting team, it right. kind of slipped through. Our son was managing. Our, he would send her an invoice once a month for like 4500 bucks. Right. So we thought we we're getting good rent. And... She said, oh, yeah, no problem, paid. And he wasn't thinking to check it. And the accounting team wasn't checking it because it was outside the Airbnb program. Right. So we didn't really have any knowledge. There wasn't a, there, our, our accounting system wasn't doing the checks and balances there to right. make sure that. And once we caught it, now, now the excuses started. And it got longer and longer about how she has got kids who she was, you know, just saying their kids had cancer they were dying and we started to feel really bad which for which was all lies it by was the all way. lies yeah. it was all lies because we i was back in new york and i drove by one day and i'm like why the hell is my couch out by the fire right they had a fire going with our living room couch and other chairs from the living room right outside the trundle bed was by the curb there yes. was a door that had a hole kicked through yes. it and we're like okay I, we need to get inside the house and take a look yeah and she wouldn't let us in because her right. son was sick on on all kinds of medication which is not true right. and so it was well, oh my god this went on forever so it took us forever long story short we finally said you got to get out she was breeding dogs in the house yep she was breeding big dogs in the house. There was dog piss and crap every place. It was disgusting. And that they chewed up the wood trim in the house. They chewed up the furniture. Everything. There's a post online that went viral that we did. It's got like a million views or a million and a half views, yeah. something like that. And it's all about me walking through that house and showing what happened. The, everything. At the end of the day, 
we had offered her what four grand to walk away. Yeah. We said we'll give you four grand if you just leave because because she said, guess what? Oh, here, oh, everyone should understand this too. Once she was paying us direct, guess what she became? Right, a, a tenant. tenant. And in New York State, tenants get all the rules. Right. They can just pretty much own your house if they want to. Right. And the government says, yes, those big bad landlords. Let's screw the let's screw them. So New York State let her stay, and she said, I know all the rules, I know all the laws, yeah. and you can't, you'll have to evict me, and yeah. I'll be here for six more months. And she claims she knew people in high places and all this oh, stuff, yeah. but she didn't. She couldn't be more trash. She couldn't have been trashier if no, she tried. She, she was, was nothing but a such a scumbag. Yeah. But for I forgot exactly why she moved out. But she, there was a reason why she said, well, I'm going to get out. Oh, and we made her sign well, something. She she was starting to say, oh, there's all these problems with the house. There's oh, of course. bugs in the house. Yeah. There's bees in, in infestation. There's... Um, and then uh, she turned the sump or the pump off outside, so then yes. the water started. That's right. And then oh, Department of Health. She got Department yes. of Health involved. Yes. Yeah, she got Department of Health involved, saying that we were leaving. We were we had septic on the lawn, and they were going to have to condemn that. Oh, it got to be terrible. So mind you, she was the one that manufactured all that. So what I do remember at the end, though, was that we made her sign something, and she said, "She said you will not come after me for any any of the damages in the house." We hadn't seen the house yet. Right. And we said, fine, just get the F out of our house. Just get out. Like I couldn't, we couldn't take it anymore. Finally goes out. And that's when I did my walkthrough and found that she stole everything. Everything. Everything, everything was stolen. If it was there, it left, it was damaged. It was ruined, yeah. She, I mean, she stole the silverware. She she broke into the cleaning closet and stole everything. She took the curtains off of the window. Like everything. she stole, and the stuff that was yeah. left there was so, I mean, to, it was so disgusting. Oh. I almost vomited walking through. It was so foul. She lived in there with these with, with, with children, these, these supposed sick, sick children. Yeah. And there, there were probably about twenty people living in that house because yeah. she was charging rent to them. I'm sure. With down drug paraphernalia. Oh yeah, all with, that. And then during during the time where she was so called, you know, out of sorts and and without money, I saw pictures on Facebook of her in oh, yeah. um, Florida and Orlando on a family vacation for oh, one sure. of her kids' birthday. Well, when you don't pay when you don't pay rent for weeks, months on end. You know, you uh, you make a lot of money that way. So anyway, listen, we we got to move on from that but but it was it was such a wretched experience so we had to re renovate the whole house yeah we had to refurnish it but let's start i know people are going to say well just turn it to your insurance company so we did yeah and the insurance company said hard living looks yeah. like hard living oh we're going to say it looks like hard living insurance companies suck yeah. by the way so insurance companies insurance has become the worst thing in the world yeah. so what was the line our insurance agent told us he said he said yeah insurance sucks um i'm just here to make it suck a little less yeah I'm here, yeah <laughs> Yeah, insurance sucks. I'm here to make it suck a little less. Thanks a lot. So, yeah, so we got no benefit from insurance. We called the police, and the police, all she said was, oh, the furniture that, the, the, she said, I brought all my own furniture in. I put all their furniture in the basement. Yeah. If someone took it, I don't know what happened. Yeah. And I was like, I was in the day she left, and they said, well, we, you, can you prove it? I'm like, can I prove it? And I couldn't prove it. And then let's talk about Airbnb because I fought with Airbnb for months yeah, regarding they were, this. They were no help because at all. they have that million dollar you know policy to cover any damages oh, or whatever. Oh, sure they do. But because they told her to pay outside, they told her to pay direct instead yeah. of um, through the reservation. Yep. It didn't look like she ever had a reservation there, so I could never prove that she actually was staying in the house as an Airbnb guest. It was so a debacle. We lost. We put that. Now that's one of the houses that now is a. I think we've converted that to a long term rental. Yes. So that's converted. And what are we getting for rent for that now? I think it's twenty three fifty a month. Yeah, something like that. So we had a house we were normally getting around fifteen to sixteen hundred dollars a month for because it's all furnished. We rent it out for twenty three hundred and fifty dollars a month. So our mortgage payment is like twelve hundred bucks a month on that house, maybe all in. Um, and so even after paying our property manager company, everything else, we should be netting seven, 800 bucks a month profit without all the headaches, without all the headaches. So at the end of the day, I think it was, it was a much better investment. So I yeah. know we went down a long path with that, but I think it's important for people to understand that, you know, when you get beat up enough, you start to say to yourself, is it worth it? Yeah. Anything in life you say, is it worth it? And when the whole portfolio lost money in 2023, we said, why are we doing this? Like, let's just put long-term tenants in there. They're beautiful homes. They're fully furnished. And let's put long-term tenants in there. And we decided to keep two. Want to tell mm -hmm. them why we got to keep two? Yeah. So one of them is our house. So we want to, you know, I think our old, that our, our old home. house. Yep. yep. So I think that's one benefit of, of owning um, short-term rental or vacation properties across the world or across the country so that you have somewhere to go for yourself. Right. And now we have, we have a new grandson on the way. We do. So, so that yeah, way we we'll have go. somewhere to go. And, well, we, and we were going to sell that. Right. Let, we, we started to say, let's sell that and the house across the street as a compound, like a 10 acre compound with two houses. Right. We wanted to sell it as a package. And then our son said, hey, by the way, we're expecting a, a grandson. By the way, he's also named after you in the middle name. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, my namesake. So I was so excited. I said, where am I going to play with him? And that house has a pool. We have the kiddie pool built into the pool. 
We have a slide. We've got Dymore. We've got sand. We've got hot tubs. We've got everything we need. And two of them may be manageable for us. Like like we yeah. were managing the other ones, but two of them, you know, still yeah. holding on to those. It gives us somewhere to go. We can, you know, we have multiple homes. Yeah. Um, so there's that pride factor of, of owning multiple homes. Yeah. But but also not having so much competition, we can handle the the couple that we have without a lot of headaches. Yeah. And so, I, I think that's the biggest thing is that we wanted to get rid of the headaches and the fact that they weren't. So now really we're going to see if we don't have 17 or or. 13 yeah, in that area competitors if we right. if we, don't, we just removed 11 of the competition literally six or seven of them are right in the same neighborhood right so if we remove those do we then book out the two we have more much often. greater more often and at a higher rate right and that's what we're trying to do is to drive more profit with less headache and less yeah less short-term rentals and that's a really good point because more is not always more sometimes less is more you know if you can do mm, less work and create the true. same amount of income why yeah. wouldn't you do that you know, I think we're always talking about the fearless future, right? And I think yep. that it's important to say that having multiple rental properties in your portfolio is a good idea. We're going to keep short-term rentals. And I, I'm not going to say we wouldn't take more. Right. We just might do them more in vacation destinations where they where places that we, we want to go. Right. And then have, have other people paying off our mortgage. Correct. Right, for that. So that's really what I would recommend people to do. But I think you have to have a combination of everything. If you want to have a fearless future, you mean you have to have income from multiple different streams. And that's where I think that these, uh, they come into play. So don't, don't say no to them, but just be, be extra cautious and don't go crazy until the dust settles and we see where it's all going to, all going to fall. So that concludes this episode of the Fearless Future podcast. If you liked this episode and you're on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you're listening or watching on another platform, make sure you subscribe to get all that future content.